It finally happened on Monday Night Raw last night. The announcement that we've been waiting for over a decade for. Monday Night Raw is finally moving back to two hours. What does that mean? How long will it last? And what is the latest on Monday Night Raw moving to two hours on the USA Network? And will it stay two hours when Monday Night Raw moves to Netflix in 2025. A major update on Cody Rhodes and his potential match at Bad Blood. Will he be defending the WWE Championship? Logan Paul and Kevin Nash get into it on social media over comments Logan Paul made not knowing the difference between a work and a shoot. And a major update on where Money in the Bank 2025 will take place all this and so much more on today's off the script and we will start with cody rhodes cody rhodes is the wwe champion cody rhodes will defend that wwe championship this friday on the season premiere of friday night smackdown inside a steel cage against solo sokoa which is a great thing i've been calling for that for the last several weeks i don't think anybody thinks Cody Rhodes and Solo Sokoa is a PLE match. It wasn't at SummerSlam. A lot of fans kind of complained about Cody Rhodes defending the WWE Championship against Solo Sokoa in the main event of SummerSlam. They tried to hide the match between those two in a Bloodline Rules match, and it was only made to usher in the return of Roman Reigns, which we saw at SummerSlam. Then we got news several weeks ago that Solo Sokoa was challenging the winner of Cody Rhodes and Kevin Owens from their match at Bash in Berlin. A lot of people didn't want this rematch on pay-per-view. A lot of fans were like, well, I think Cody Rhodes needs something a little bit more substantial, a little bit more story for Cody Rhodes, something different for Cody Rhodes. So WWE is listening to the fan base. And Cody Rhodes versus Solo Sokoa will take place on Friday night instead of at Bad Blood. But what does that mean for Cody Rhodes and Bad Blood? Now, Dave Meltzer reports the news while speaking on Wrestling Observer Live. Rhodes and his opponent is still unknown. You only have five match pay-per-views, and we've got Gunther and Sami Zayn. We've got Cody Rhodes, which will be announced on Friday Whatever they do, we got Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan. We got Damian Priest and Finn Balor. And then CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre. Dave Meltzer doesn't have any clue as to what's going on. He basically regurgitated what everybody else talked about coming out of Monday Night Raw with no real substance behind it. I'm starting to wonder why I even read Meltzer quotes on here because they offer zero as far as news in any way, shape, or form. But he does have the bad blood card correct. And I would go out there and even say, let's add Braun Breaker and Jey Uso for the Intercontinental Championship. And then obviously, Cody Rhodes is in the advertisements. They've been teasing vignettes for several weeks with him uh, having a stakeout outside the uh, arena in Atlanta for Bad Blood. So he will obviously be a part of the show. But what does he do if he's wrestling Saul Sokoa on Friday night? I think Roman Reigns shows up on Friday. I think Roman Reigns gets involved. Mixed with the fact that Cody called out Jacob Fatu and would rather wrestle Jacob Fatu than wrestle Solo Sokoa. I think with all of this in the blender together, you mix it up. I don't think Cody Rhodes is going to be defending the WWE Championship at Bad Blood. I don't. I would love to see a Cody Rhodes versus Randy Orton feud, but I think that may be too soon to get the ball rolling on that. I don't want to see another Cody Rhodes and Kevin Owens match because if Kevin Owens does turn heel and we do get another match... Kevin Owens is not going to win, so it would be a heel turn only for him to end up losing again. doesn't really make any sense. I think the best thing right now is to build towards the Survivor Series and War Games. I think Cody teaming with Roman, because I do think this show is going to be a massive show for WWE, Bad Blood. Cody teams with Roman against Solo and Jacob Fatu in one of the marquee matches at the show. That's safe. You can do that. It could build towards Survivor Series and War Games. And then we can start planting seeds for whatever happens next with Cody. He should be done with the bloodline coming out of that. So that's my prediction for what Cody Rhodes is going to be doing at Bad Blood. Let me know what you guys think about that. 
But I think we can all agree that Cody and Solo taking place this Friday on SmackDown is certainly the right decision for the WWE Championship. Milwaukee. It's cold in the wintertime, man. I remember that Milwaukee wanted to place a bid for the Royal Rumble to come in January when they winterize Milwaukee Brewer Stadium. Now they want money in the bank. Milwaukee's putting together a bid to host Money in the Bank in 2025. According to the Milwaukee Business Journal, uh, they are putting together a bid to host next year's Money in the Bank premium live event in the city. If WWE accepts the bid, then it will take place at Fiserv Forum. Officials in the city have previously shown interest in hosting WWE PLEs with Mayor Cavalier Johnson previously telling the Business Journal that he's a huge WWE fan and had past talks with WWE about Milwaukee hosting a large-scale event. Milwaukee leaders have previously been in talks with WWE and were pitching to host a future Royal Rumble at American Family Field Ballpark once it's been winterized. The city previously hosted the 2012 Elimination Chamber and the 2017 Fastlane events. It will hold a SmackDown event there in Milwaukee on November 15th. Good. Good for them. Sounds like money in the bank in Milwaukee in the middle of the summer is better than the Royal Rumble in the dead of winter in January. So uh, I don't know how you guys are looking at that, but uh, I would much rather take the warmer weather over the colder weather if you're going to be traveling to Milwaukee. So we'll, we'll see what happens with that. But WWE is getting the ball rolling They are in a situation right now where all these major cities are bidding on having WWE come into their part of town. It's a Nick Khan move. It's smart. So we'll keep you guys updated on that. But the thing is, the one thing I'm looking forward to, man, we haven't gotten a date or location for next year's SummerSlam. So we will see what happens. I know Tony Khan moved all in out of Wembley Stadium for the time being, at least for 2025. AEW will be taking Forbidden Door into London. I don't know where they'll be, probably O2 in London, but they will not be having All In next year at Wembley. They'll they'll be doing All In in Arlington at Globe Life Field, where the Texas Rangers play, and that is taking place in July. So does this open up WWE to potentially move on into Wembley Stadium for SummerSlam next year in 2025? Very, very interesting stuff, the way WWE handles and strategizes their PLEs. I'll keep you guys posted on that, but that's the one thing I am looking forward to. WWE, Drew McIntyre, CM Punk. This is one of the biggest storylines in all pro wrestling, and it's all been done for the most part up until this point, until the bracelet was destroyed over the bracelet that CM Punk has worn, and he has called out as being important to him. It has the names of his dog, Larry, and his wife, AJ Lee, April, on the bracelet. Drew McIntyre broke it last week. Last night, we got the announcement from Adam Pierce that this is ending at Bad Blood inside Hell in a Cell. But the bracelet is no more. Now that the bracelet is no more, WWE is now selling the bracelet on WWE Shop for $9.99. And the creator of CM Punk's bracelet, which... She made one bracelet, one of one, for him specifically, has now called out WWE for putting this on shop for $10 for anybody to purchase. In recent weeks, one of WWE's hottest feuds has been centered over the bracelet. Not a championship, not priority in the pecking order on WWE Monday Night Raw, but a bracelet. And a bracelet that was crafted for CM Punk by a fan of CM Punk, one of one. While the bracelet seemingly met its end last week, fans can now pick up their own replica piece on WWE Shop. WWE Shop is selling a replica of the bracelet, which bears the names of AJ and Larry, and is available for purchase at $9.99 plus shipping. A description of the, t- of the bracelet, of the item reads... CM Punk keeps a reminder of his love for his wife and furry four-legged family member, Larry, in the form of a friendship bracelet. Take a trinket that reminds you of your loved ones wherever you go, like the Second City Saint, by making this CM Punk friendship bracelet yours. One look at this accessory lets everyone know you'd fight to get your piece of flesh 
if anyone questions your loyalty to those you hold dear. Yes, let me wear the names of somebody who's not my wife and not my pet on my wrist because I'm a fucking mark and I'm pathetic. Are you fucking serious? Whoever, first of all, the dialogue in which WWE regurgitates for these descriptions on their website, man, is it, it's, it, it almost sounds like it's not even human, but that is pathetic. And if you buy this piece, this accessory, you are pathetic. Now, this new item has caught the attention of Victoria, who created the original bracelet and gifted the item to Punk during WWE's WrestleMania week earlier this year. On Twitter, Victoria shared that a heads up would have been appreciated and admitted that the bracelet was supposed to be a one-of-a-kind item for CM Punk. Later, Victoria clarified that she doesn't have any beef with WWE and was simply taken by surprise that her creation is now being used for merchandise. I think it's fucking sad to be quiet. Listen, I get that WWE's a business. I get that WWE legitimately has to monetize everything and make money off of everything. But you just ruined the entire meaning behind this bracelet. This was only for punk. The whole storyline revolved around the sentimental value of CM Punk and this bracelet and what it meant to him. And the fact that Drew McIntyre knew it was so important to CM Punk and who he was that he made it a mission statement to take it away from him and destroy it because of what Punk did to Drew McIntyre over and over and over again, taking the WWE Championship away from him on three separate occasions. Now you want everybody to wear this bracelet when the whole storyline revolved around this one bracelet, one bracelet, one of one, that this fan made for Phil Brooks. You want people to buy this bracelet when the whole storyline revolved around this one unique thing that made the entire storyline what it is today. I don't get it. I don't get it. You may think, oh, it's not that big of a deal. I, I don't look at it that way. I, 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 that would bother me as a person. I don't know why WWE would take something like that and blow it up and now sell it on WWE Shop. Who's going to wear something with the names of April and Larry on it? I don't, I don't really understand. Do you know an April? Do you know a Larry? How, how many people are going to go out and buy this thing that know the people with two similar names as, as Larry and April. It doesn't even make sense. Even if you're a punk fan, you're going to be wearing this thing around? Even if you're a punk fan, you're going to buy this thing and put it in your room or your office, you're going to put it on display somewhere? I mean, it's, it's fucking stupid. If I'm her, I'm pissed. She clearly didn't want to ruffle any feathers. She'll probably go out and make CM Punk a brand new bracelet that's different than this bracelet now being that, you know, the storyline is over. And now that now this thing is sold on WWE Shop, now everybody's got one. Imagine doing something beautiful for someone, and then they try to monetize what you created them and then not give you anything back. Are they going to give her any revenue? Are they going to give her any piece of the fucking cut here? Just a fucked up situation, man. I seen this in today's news this morning, and I'm like, that, that, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. I would not put this on sale. If I'm WWE, I'm pulling this immediately. That, that's pathetic. It really is. Speaking of pathetic, Logan Paul, he fired back at Kevin Nash. I'm better than you ever were, says Logan Paul. Now, Logan Paul's involvement in WWE has been a topic of debate ever since his arrival in 2021. I didn't understand it. I hated it. Then I saw him wrestling. I'm like, all right, he can stay. While some believe Logan Paul brings a natural heel charisma and eyes to the product, how many of those eyes stay with the product? Nobody knows. Many others believe the controversial content creator is taking away spots that could benefit full-time talent. This week, Kevin Nash shared his two cents on Logan Paul and didn't hold back with his thoughts on the former U.S. champion. On his Click This podcast, Nash recalled Logan Paul admitting to Hulk Hogan on his Impulsive podcast that he didn't know what a shoot meant. Kevin Nash says this. He's not one of the boys. Where he learned that shit at, where's he fucking going up and down the road? Fucking talking about our fucking jargon. That motherfucker, from what I heard, he's making five million bucks for a limited fucking date or dates. 
And those other motherfuckers are out there making house shows. Fuck you. That's from the boys. End quote. Now, Logan Paul obviously responded to Kevin Nash in typical Logan Paul fashion and admitted to Kevin Nash he didn't know who Kevin Nash was and admittedly that he's not as versed in the WWE and wrestling as he should be. Logan Paul, who considers himself one of the top five in WWE already, imagined what he'd be like if he dedicated more time to WWE and became one of the boys. Logan Paul's harshest comments were saved for the very end of this video that I'm going to share with you right now and directly aimed his comments at Kevin Nash, who is a two-time WWE Hall of Famer. This is what Logan Paul had to say on social media. I got people messaging me. They're like, yo, Kevin Nash is talking shit about you. I said, damn, who is Kevin Nash? And I mean that. I, I, I'm unfamiliar with this guy, which I think is his problem. I'm not as versed in the WWE and in, in, in wrestling as maybe I should be, as, as, as my peers are. But then how am I so much better than all of them? You know, I don't have the answers to these questions. It, 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 it is a question. I don't, I don't know how I could be the best in the WWE or, or at least one of the best. Like, I'm a surely a top fiver. And I don't even do it full time. Now, imagine if I did learn a little bit. Imagine if I devoted. Came one of the boys. <laughs> Learn what the difference between a shoot and a work was. Will that make me a champion? Fuck me. Fuck you. You're one of the old guys who is bitter that I am better at your job than you ever were. And that makes you pathetic. This will be my sport. And I will continue to make guys like you eat your words when I devote a little bit of time to it. So fuck me. Fuck you. You know, it's amazing to me that Logan Paul is one of those guys that could basically go out there and say and do whatever he wants, and there's really no blowback from WWE at all in regards to his behavior. Now, I know a lot of people are probably going to cite his comments during the Olympic Games and the whole box boxing fiasco that was, and he was very adamant about who's male and who's female and why they shouldn't be boxing and, and all that nonsense. WWE didn't do anything about that, and people called for Logan Paul to be canceled. If you hated Logan Paul, you hated him even further after that. If you like Logan Paul, now you dislike him. And if you agree with Logan Paul, you love him even more for his comments based on that. So he obviously put himself in a controversial predicament. WWE didn't do anything about it. Now, that wasn't planned. That was Logan Paul speaking as Logan Paul. That's Logan Paul speaking his mind away from WWE. He is a direct reflection of the company, and they did nothing about it. Now, they could have done something about it and spoken to him in private. Nobody knows. But in the public eye, as far as we know, nothing's been done about it. Now he's on social media, and he interviewed Hulk Hogan. And again, I don't know if he was trolling Hulk Hogan or not. If he's serious, I don't know. But the fact that Logan doesn't know the difference between a work and a shoot is actually surprising to me. I think he is, I don't think he's that stupid, honestly. And then Kevin Nash takes the bait. Kevin Nash says so eloquently in Kevin Nash style what he thinks of Logan Paul. Logan Paul you know, is in a position where he's going to say whatever he wants and does to Kevin Nash. Kevin Nash is a WWE Hall of Famer. He's best friends with Paul Levesque, who is the boss now in WWE. Is there going to be any blowback to him publicly telling Kevin Nash, fuck you, all over his social media? This is not building to a match. This is not building between a stare down. This is not Kevin Nash coming back to television. What are we doing here? I mean, is Logan Paul going to continue to get away with instances like this and create drama online that reflects bad on WWE? Because that's the way I look at it. I mean, Kevin Nash, listen, Kevin Nash could have probably went about saying what he said in a different manner without dropping a bunch of F-bombs. I know I could probably do the same thing from time to time, but did it really need to be that hostile? 
Kevin Nash's response to Logan Paul or his comments about Logan Paul warranted Logan Paul coming back at him in the way that he did. But it's not building to anything. It's not going to be Kevin Nash and Logan Paul at fucking WrestleMania next year. So what are we doing here? The one thing I will say, the one thing that Logan Paul does unbelievably well and, and better than most of the people that you see on television, he knows how to create interest. He knows how to get people talking, and he's very good at his job. You can't take that away from him. How many matches has he had? He's fucking unbelievable. And he goes in there, and he wrestles like he's in a fucking battle, in a war. I love it. So he's a great in-ring performer. He's unbelievable at his job. He knows how to get a reaction out of people. He knows how to be a great heel. I love all those aspects about Logan Paul. But the fact is, do we need to take it to this level? Like, what are we doing? When is enough enough from WWE where it's a bad reflection on them? I don't know. I don't know. Some people may agree with Logan Paul and what he did here to Kevin Nash. Some, some people might like it. Some people might take Kevin Nash's side because they hate Logan Paul. I don't know, man. It's just, it's just, to me, completely unnecessary. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section. Do you like what Logan Paul said about Kevin Nash? Do you agree with Kevin Nash on Logan Paul? Sound off in the comment section below. And finally, the big one. WWE is moving to two hours starting October 7th. And that is going to happen for the rest of the year until they move to Netflix beginning in January of 2025. Now, this was announced on Monday Night Raw last night. Very casually, very low-key. WWE fans who hope that Raw will return to a two-hour format and hoped for the last decade will finally get their wish when it happens on October 7th. I wished upon the star, and I, I, I wish to the gods that this would happen, and finally, we are getting it, but it is not a permanent change. However, Raw is in the gap that they're in right now between their contract ending with USA and moving to Netflix in January. They needed a home. So Monday Night Raw was given a, a little bit of an extension by NBCU and USA Network, and they're only paying for a two-hour block. They want that 8 to 10 block, and then they want something to come on from 10 to 11 that is going to generate interest for not only USA Network, but for WWE as well for that last hour of Monday Night Raw. Plus, it's football season, so two hours of Monday Night Raw up against the NFL is a lot better than three hours because that three-hour Raw, that third hour, is death for WWE. Now, WWE made a deal with USA to keep Raw on the channel. The original deal was supposed to expire this month, like I previously mentioned. Dave Meltzer reported that the USA Network made the call for the two-hour format. When Raw moves to Netflix, it will once again be a three-hour show, according to Dave Meltzer. Take it with a grain of salt. PW Insider reports that when it comes to Raw going back to three hours, when the Netflix deal, Netflix deal kicks in, They've not been able to lock down a definitive yes or no on that story. Now, while WWE may have to stick with the show past two hours, they could have a say in how long it does go. It was said some in the company have played coy when asked, while others have suggested that they will have the ability to be flexible with the length of the show, depending on what is needed that specific week, once they are moving to Netflix on January 5th. Now, WrestleVotes tweeted this out in regards to Monday Night Raw. Regarding the news of Raw switching to two hours for the rest of the year, I've heard that many production and social staff who work behind the scenes found out in real time just like the rest of us. As for what this means for 2025 and Netflix, one source said, WWE is eagerly anticipating the freedom to run various times as needed. No firm decision has been made either way. I said this last night. At the top of the hour, when I came on for my Monday Night Raw review. Three-hour Raws, as far as I'm concerned, should be dead. There is no need for a three-hour Monday Night Raw. There's no need for three-hour anything, really, when it comes to pro wrestling. SmackDown's two hours. Dynamite's two hours. Collision is two hours. TNA is two hours. NXT is two hours. Everything is two hours but Monday Night Raw. Why? What happened to quality over quantity? Why do we need three hours? Three hours only drags the show down. Three hours only lowers the rating on a weekly basis. Three hours is a chore on most weeks to sit through, even though the shows are a lot better than they used to be over the last couple of years. 
And a lot of people are complaining already when we asked for this over the last decade. Oh, well, my favorites are not going to be used anymore. Oh, it's going to be tough for them to feature everybody else on the show. Well, maybe that's a fucking problem. How better would some look if you don't see them every week? Absence makes the heart grow fonder. You know, I never heard this when Triple H ran one hour of NXT every single week on the WWE Network. You know what he did? He managed his roster the right way. You didn't see everybody every single week. You saw your favorites one week. They take off the next week. They show up the following week. Rinse and repeat. It gives opportunity for things to breathe. It gives opportunity for talents that are focused on way too much and are losing appeal to take a step back and maybe they can focus on storylines a little bit more and focus on that talent not being focused on and in front of the audience every single week where they grow tiresome of said talent. I don't know why everybody's complaining about this. And I said this on my Monday Night Raw post show last night. Three-hour Raws, they need to die, and most likely they will die. I, we don't know what type of commercial breaks there will be on Netflix, how many commercial breaks, if there will be any. We don't know what we're paying for if you're a basic Netflix subscriber or a premium tier subscriber for Netflix. We don't know what that includes until we get to January in 2025. But WWE is going to be in a position where they don't need to go three hours. WWE can go two hours and stop the show if they want on one week. They can go two hours and 15 minutes one week. They could go two hours and 30 minutes, depending on what's happening, how big the show is, if something important's happening, if there's a major match, if they need more wrestling on the show, you know, as compared to a previous week. If there's a big championship match and they really want to get that match, the focus that it needs, WWE is going to have the freedom to do whatever they want. They don't need to be, if they want to be three hours, they could certainly be three hours if the week calls for it, if the situation and creative calls for it. But if they want to go two hours and 15 minutes, why are we complaining that they're not going three hours? That's perfect. And as a content creator, I love the fact that 8 to 10, I'm, I go live at 10, 15. I'm out of here by 12, 15. Goodbye. Normally on Monday Night, Monday night Raw with three hours, I, I don't get done till 1.30, 1 1.45 in the morning on a Monday night, early Tuesday morning. I don't, I don't want to be up that late recording, living, live stream, being live. I don't, I don't want to do that. So I, I love this. I absolutely love this move. I think it's a fantastic move, and I can't wait for October 7th, man. It's going to be it's gonna be such a, a breath of fresh air. And, and the fact that WWE is moving to two hours, who's to say that they're not prepping their audience, they're not prepping their staff to get used to the two hours because that's exactly what they're going to do when they move to Netflix. Everybody's like, oh, they're going to go back to three hours. We don't know that for sure. They don't have to. They don't have to go three hours. They could do whatever they want and be at liberty and have the freedom to do whatever they want when the situation calls for it. I can't wait, man. We've asked for this, and there's absolutely no reason why anybody should be complaining. Thank you guys very much for all your support. Tonight, I will be live with the Solid Monster for TNT, another new episode of TNT tonight. Tonight, we debate, did AEW go all out, and were they too violent on Saturday night with Swerve, Adam Page... Brian Danielson being suffocated with a plastic bag. The ladies, Willow Nightingale and Chris Statlander, were they too violent? Were AEW too violent? Did they go too far with AEW All Out? We will debate that tonight and give you all of your pro wrestling news this week on TNT Tonight. Make sure you guys tune in live, 8.30 p.m. Myself and the Solo Monster live on Tuesday Night Titans. Hit that thumbs up. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Please hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the bell for all notifications. And please go and check out all of the other content on the channel. There's plenty of it, including my clips channel, which is linked down below in the description of this very video. Thank you guys very much, and I'll see you live tonight for Tuesday Night Titans on Off the Script. We'll see you later.